Okay, we're going to talk about the anatomy of heart chambers and answer the questions, what is the topography of each heart chamber and what does internal heart anatomy really look like? Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Morton and I'm the noted anatomist. A big shout out to Anatomage for the use of these really cool images to show this anatomy. Let's get started. Here's an anterior view of the heart with the heart in the pericardial sac and we're gonna melt the lungs and the diaphragm and the pericardial sac away. So now we see an anterior view of the heart. Notice that the right atrium forms the right border of the heart. The most anteriorly oriented chamber is the right ventricle. As we look at a left lateral view, notice how that right ventricle boom, touches right up against to the very back surface of the sternum. It's like my Uncle Bob's belly touching a wall. It just goes right into the back of that sternum. Um, now, the most left portion or border of the heart is the left ventricle and it sits crisscross applesauce right on top of that diaphragm as does the apex. Now let's take away that diaphragm and let's see the most posteriorly oriented chamber is the left atrium which touches the esophagus. And so as we continue to pivot the heart we see there's the left atrium again and now let's add the esophagus and the descending aorta. Okay, so we're all the way back to the right side of the heart again. There's the superior and inferior vena cava and the oracle of the right atrium. So now let's melt that away and look at a superior view of the tricuspid valve. And there's the opening of the coronary sinus and there is the fossa ovalis on the interatrial septum. Let's add the oracle of the right atrium back and let's melt away the front of the right ventricle. And there is a papillary muscle with the chordae tendinae and a bottom view of the tricuspid valve. Now notice all of these other trabeculae carnae, this rough myocardium that helps blood to mix so it doesn't clot. There's our outflow tract going into the pulmonary valve and pulmonary trunk. We add the right ventricle back on, and there is the outflow tract. That's the pulmonary trunk. And then let's melt that away so we look inside, and there's the opening of the two pulmonary arteries and all the pulmonary vasculature coming off, going into the lungs. It's blue because pulmonary arteries deliver deoxygenated blood to the lungs to get oxygenated. So let's take away those pulmonary arteries and let's add the pulmonary veins, which are going to be then bringing back the oxygenated blood from the lungs. And let's just add the lungs on there again so we can see it. <laughs> That's awesome. And there's this oxygenated blood from the pulmonary veins that bring it all the way back to the left atrium. So we're now inside the left atrium and there's a superior view of our mitral valve, also known as the uh, bicuspid valve. And there's the wall of the inner uh, atrial septum. Let's add the oracle of the left atrium back and let's now dissolve away the wall of that left ventricle. So there's the chordae tendinae and the bottom portion of the mitral valve and the interventricular septum. And let's melt that away and there's the outflow tract. There's the aortic valve. And now let's add the wall of the left ventricle back. And that, my friends, is the anatomy of heart chambers in a nutshell. Uh, just want to say, hey, thanks again to Anatomage and where we get the the image, all that, like these images, the data comes from real human donors who were frozen shortly after death and the bodies were sectioned from head to toe and the digital image was captured of each tissue slice and the structures were identified on each section throughout the entire body and the images were then digitally restacked to reconstruct the full anatomy. And these digital cadavers closely resemble real human tissue. Let's take a look at the whole thing again, shall we?